Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and I'm here with the 12.19 mid patch update. We'll be going over updated tier lists for all 5 roles and follow up on balance changes from the patch. But before we jump into things, I just want to give a quick shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24-7 just waiting to share everything that they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head over for some professional help now. Now, let's get on this tier list. First, we'll begin with our top laners. Nasus is being moved up to the OP tier. A topic that we visit now and then in our videos is how Riot incorrectly hands out buffs from time to time. Specifically, they have a really bad habit of taking scaling champions that should be high risk, high reward picks, and just making them way too consistent. The result is you playing against a champion that needs to be shut down so they don't reach the point where they can 1v9 the game, yet you feel like there's no real answer to do that. With Nasus, it's a particularly bad feeling. Even if you beat him in the first few levels, once he has his ultimate, he becomes a really hard champion to force all ins against. But if you decide to take small trades, he just sustains it up with his passive. If your jungler takes too long to come, he's very quickly able to 1v2. As is usually the case for things like this, he's probably going to get some compensation nerfs pretty soon. Maybe Riot should just really work on their design philosophy for scaling champions, and as I've said before, give them higher rewards for making it to certain spikes, rather than making it easier for them to get there. Okay, now that that rant's over, let's get on to our next pick. Dr. Muno has been on a bit of a tear lately, so we're also moving him up to the OP tier. Despite a lot of people instantly thinking of Mundo as a tank, remember, he's technically a juggernaut, just he's a really, really beefy one. Being a juggernaut means Mundo has a lot of carrying power and in fights can just put out similar damage to a bruiser. The only issue is actually getting onto the targets, but as long as you run ghosts and fight around having your ultimate up, that shouldn't be too hard to overcome. We'll be moving Cyan up to the OP tier. Remember, our placement of Cyan on the tier list is assuming that you're building him the right way, with Sunfire Aegis or Frostfire Gauntlet. Yeah, maybe Prowler's Claw may be a funny item from time to time, but aside from those cheesy passive kills, it's a really horrible way to play Scion, and massively tanks his win rate. Warwick moves up to the S tier. As usual, remember that the difference between the OP and S tiers are pretty small. It's just a slight difference in either consistency or the ceiling a champion has for 1v9 in games. Pantheon moves down to the A tier here. The nerfs to Eclipse made it harder to secure an early lead in some of the closer matchups here in the top lane, and Pantheon is a champion that really needs to snowball fast to have a big impact on the game. It's worth noting that Pantheon is a champion that performs a lot better the higher the rank you go. The A tier ranking applies to Platinum up, but in Gold tier and under, consider him a B tier pick, a pick that should only be used to counter a specific matchup. Udyr got quite a few buffs aimed at making him a better laner this patch, with each one being either aimed at more sustain when hitting minions and better pushing power. Turns out those buffs didn't really hit the mark, and he's still struggling pretty badly. As a result, we're moving him back down to the C tier. We're moving Trinimer down to the C tier. Pretty much every meta champion in our top 2 tiers dumpsters him so hard early that he doesn't really bounce back. When you're playing from behind, you can't really become that scary side lane threat that he needs to be to win games. Ryze's buffs this patch brought his win rate up a bit in the top lane, but being a bit better than complete trash is still trash. So, we'll move him up, but only to the C tier. He loses a lot of lanes, and in the few matchups where he is a viable counter pick, I promise there are better options. A lot of people have been saying that Blitzkrieg would be a top laner juggernaut fighter with his list of buffs as patch. Well, let me just say, they couldn't be more wrong. He's absolutely awful here, so we're adding him to the D tier to deter people from picking him. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Unfortunately, Master Yi's nerves didn't quite hit him as hard as we'd like to see, so we're moving him up a notch to the S tier. He's definitely not as mindlessly OP as before, and he's still one of the weaker picks in this tier, but he's just a little bit too consistent for such a powerful hyper carry. Elise also moves up to the S tier. Currently, there are very few early game aggressive carry junglers that actually are strong in the meta. In fact, in our OP and S tiers, the only other one is Shaco, and most of the time, he's way better off being played as AP rather than a snowball AD assassin. Rek'Sai was doing super well in high elo, but in the middle and lower ranks, she ranges from average to poor. Elise is a lot easier to execute, so she does a much better job in the hands of Platinum under players. And following up on that, we're going to be moving Rek'Sai up to the A tier, but do note that this comes with an asterisk. This move is specifically for players in high plat. We overestimated how hard she would be hit by the nurse's patch, and in high plat, she's definitely still at least viable, and in Diamond Plus, she's honestly still pretty much as OP as before. However, like I said before, in low platinum gold, she just really isn't worth your time, and in silver and under, she's borderline a troll pick. Kha'Zix moves down to the B tier. The one-time king of the jungle is now a pick that you usually want to steer clear of. The only time that he's really worth picking is if the enemy team is completely full of squishies with little to no CC, but with how strong juggernauts and tanks are, those times are pretty rare. Now here's our mid lane tier list. 
It's worth noting that while he did get demoted in the top lane, Pantheon is still doing just fine mid. The top lane matchups are a lot closer, so even a tiny adjustment to a core item is felt up there. But in the mid lane, he's such a huge lane bully that he just is still a machine. So all of this is to say that he's still in our OP tier here. We're adding Aatrox to the tier list as an S tier pick. The squishier champ pool in the mid lane makes him a lot deadlier here. But an even bigger factor here that you may not be considering is that mid lane opens up to a lot earlier team fighting. Aatrox is really snowballing for a champion that spikes really hard in the mid game. When you play him in the top lane, you don't really get that chance to partake in those early dragon team fights since it's across the map. But as a mid laner, it's natural to be a part of those fights. This gives you a chance to pick up some early kills and totally dominate the games. Malphite moves up to the A tier. The buffs to his AP ratios on this patch have definitely made him more consistently able to one-shot foes. That being said, this is about as high as he can go on the tier list. Because he simply does one thing in fights, he eliminates a single squishy target. While deleting an ADC is pretty much always a good thing, he can't do much against fed juggernauts and tanks or if the enemy team has multiple threats. LeBlanc is moving up to the C tier. In a perfect world, LeBlanc isn't actually bad, but the thing is she's generally super reliant on working well with your jungler to pull her off. You'll need a jungler that will snowball you early and then work with them to constantly gank other lanes and make picks later on. In Silicum, that level of cooperation is just way too rare to bank on for games. Yone joins his brother down in the C tier. He's still one of the highest scaling AD picks that you can pick mid lane, but his early game is rough enough that you just don't consistently reach the spikes that he needs to win games. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. Bran and Ziggs are moving up to the S tier. At this point, anybody that plays bot lane and aren't abusing these mages are pretty much trolling. I mean, just look at the tier list. Six of our top 10 champions are mages, yet way more people are interested in trying to force the lower tier ADCs to work. And then they end up complaining about the role being weak because they have no agency, need a support to play the game for them, yada yada. But there's no one to blame when the answer is right there in front of them, and yet they still refuse to change their ways. Jane gets moted to the A tier this patch. Both in the bot lane and when considering other lanes, the current meta just isn't super favorable for him right now. He can always have a decent impact on the game, but just not the level of hard carrying that you need to make the S tier cut for our standards. Kaisa moves down to the B tier. Even when building her optimally, she's just pretty mediocre for a bot lane carry right now. When you look at most ADCs, the measure of how good a champion is comes to how much DPS they can put out. There are a couple of exceptions like with Ash, since she has a lot of utility, but for the most part, that's just how it is. And with Kai'Sa, she's pretty basic in that field. She's supposed to be a hyper carry, but higher tiered options just scale much better in that regard. I'd much rather play against a Kai'Sa with 3 items than a Twitch, Kogra, and Mef. In our patch rundown, we move Jinx up to the A tier, in hopes that her buffs this patch would make her viable again. The buffs definitely did help, but not enough to make her a safe blind pick really. The B tier is where all our situational picks go, and since you can only really pick her once you know what you're up against, that's where we're putting her. To finish things off, we have our supports. Now, for the role that he's actually supposed to be played in, Blitzcrank is being moved up to the OP tier. So many people saw his changes and took it to mean that Riot wants him to suddenly be a solo lane champion, and I get it. They added all that minion damage stuff, but ignore that part. The thing is, Blitzcrank is a kill lane support. By adding that extra damage, specifically the percentage damage on his autos when his W is active, they're making him a lot deadlier when you hit a hook. They're also making up for Blitzcrank's biggest weakness. Before these changes, once the hook was down, there was a huge window where the enemy bot lane could just force your fights on your ADC and ignore you, since Blitz minus his hook was basically a null factor. This was especially punishing against other kill lanes. Now you actually pose a big threat, since the enemy bot lane can't just walk past you like you don't exist. So, with all that being said, he's probably the best support in the game right now overall. Mirroring what I said about Nasus earlier, Sona is another champion that Riot shouldn't just be throwing buffs at. She's supposed to be really squishy and borderline useless in the early game, but scale into a massively impactful 5v5 champ. Any attempts to buff her early game makes her less high risk, while still breaking in big rewards. And what do you know, that's exactly what happened this patch. Surprising, right? <laughs> she's right up there, right behind Blitzcrank in terms of support power rankings, except she's a champion that takes very little effort to pull off. So, if you just like to coast to victories for free, consider abusing her until Riot fixes their mistake. Before her midscope update, even though Syndra was bad in the mid lane, she was doing pretty well as a support, but now she's flopping down here too, so we're moving her to the C tier for this role as well. And that wraps things up for our 12.19 mid patch update. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and feel free to let me know your thoughts on where the champions fall in the tier list in the comment section below. Also, check out our description for a link to join our Discord community. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.